Sidhu promotion formula hits Amrinder wall. Sources say captain is not convinced of Sidhu's elevation. Amrinder Singh meets loyalist ministers and MLAs. Sidhu holds meeting with anti-Amrinder ministers. Chief Justice of India's strong comments on sedition law says it's a colonial law that was used by the British to silence Gandhi. The court asks, is sedition law still necessary 75 years after independence? COVID warning signal India's active cases rise again. Mumbai and other districts see rise in cases. They says vaccination rate is dipping. Delhi Chief Minister says schools to stay shut till all are vaccinated. And the leaked NHRC report on post-poll violence in Bengal demands a CBI probe into the violence. Says there is no rule of law but law of ruler in Bengal. Chief Minister says it's an attempt to defame Bengal. Hello and welcome to NDTV 24-7. I'm Rohit Wellington. Let's begin with our top story. Hectic late-night political developments in Punjab. Sources say that Chief Minister Amrinder Singh is not convinced of Navjot Singh Sidhu's elevation. Both gathered late-night support of ministers and MLAs. Chief Minister met loyalist ministers and MLAs while Sidhu met anti-Amrinder ministers. Sidhu has still not been named as PCC chief. Sources say Amrinder Singh is unhappy with the high commands formula. Let's go across to Mohammed Ghazali tracking these latest developments. Ghazali, so is this the collapse of the compromise formula? Certainly uh, uh, not a collapse of the compromise formula, but what meant things was, was Harish Rawat's comment in the morning when he spoke to the media saying that Sidhu will be president and did a U-turn in the evening saying that I never said that, I was just responding to the queries of media. Now, after this, perhaps uh, Sidhu's supporters put up posters in uh, uh, in Ludhiana and other districts as well, congratulating him for his elevation as party president in the Punjab, uh, despite uh, uh, the high command not even announcing it officially. Now, later in the evening, it was Navjot Singh Sidhu first who reached Chandigarh and then met some dissident cabinet ministers who have been uh, sort of uh, unhappy with Amrinder Singh. Charanjit Singh Channi is one cabinet minister who is not uh, happy with Amrinder Singh and is likely to be sacked in a upcoming cabinet reshuffle. So all those cabinet ministers who were not happy with Amrinder met with Navjot Singh Sidhu. Meanwhile, while this meeting was going on, we got to know that Amrinder Singh, the Chief Minister of Punjab, also was holding a meeting at his private residence in Mohali with party MLAs as well as MPs. So in some way or the other, both camps are also trying to show the high command that they have numbers or they are popular or they have support within the party. But uh, as of now, uh, there are two things. One, that certainly Punjab is facing this Amrinder Sidhu rivalry for so long, but there are other crises in Punjab as well. Cabinet ministers are not happy with Amrinder Singh, a cabinet reshuffle is awaited, and there is a quite sort of uh, uneasiness within Congress leadership here in the Punjab. Nobody knows who will be in or who will be sacked from cabinet, uh, from the state cabinet. And during Sidhu's meeting, what we are hearing from sources, or uh, it, it has been uh, uh, reiterated earlier also, that if either of the cabinet ministers is sacked, then they may go for mass resig uh, resignation to show their protest. All right, Mohammad Ghazali, we leave it there. Thanks very much for joining us with those details. The other big story, the Supreme Court on Thursday questioned the sedition law, calling it colonial, as it observed that the British era law holds enormous power for misuse. The bench also asked whether it was still necessary after 75 years of independence. Meanwhile, Haryana police invoked sedition charges against a group of protesting farmers who allegedly attacked and damaged the official vehicle of the Haryana deputy speaker. Hundred farmers booked for sedition for allegedly attacking the car of the Haryana deputy speaker. The first time in their almost seven month protest against the farm laws that this charge has been used. Today came strong observations by the Chief Justice of India, N.V. Ramana, questioning the government why the British era sedition law should not be scrapped. Hearing petitions from the Editors Guild of India and others challenging its validity, the court asked the centre, Is the law still necessary in our country after 75 years of independence? It is a colonial law used by the British to silence Gandhi and others. 
Our concern is misuse of the law and threats to functioning of institutions. Also, no accountability on the part of the executive. If police wants to fix someone, they invoke sedition law and people are scared. Chief Justice asked the government's top lawyer, Government is repealing a number of old laws. Why is the government not looking into this law? The Chief Justice said, instead of cutting wood, the carpenter is cutting the forest itself. That's the effect of this law. The Attorney General replied, the law need not be struck down. Only some guidelines be set out so that the section meets its legal purpose. The Chief Justice shot back. If some party does not want to hear the voice of other party, they may use this law and implicate others and it is a serious question for individuals. We will examine the law. The Honorable Supreme Court's agreeing to examine the sedition law today is heartening, certainly to me as petitioner, but also to others who value democratic dissent and fundamental rights guaranteed by the Constitution. The National Crime Records Bureau data is in sync with the Chief Justice of India's remarks on conviction under sedition law. The number of sedition cases have increased by over 160% from 2016 to 2019. But the rate of conviction dropped to 3.3% in 2019 from 33.3% in 2016. Among those recently charged with sedition include filmmakers, a student activist, MP Shashi Tharoor, journalist Rajdeep Sardesai, Mrinal Pandey, Vinod Dua and Siddiq Kappan who's been in UP jail for over nine months with no bail or trial in sight. Niyamathil alla thittu, nirabaradigal aya manishirude me jaili thalakkan venditu ingane ullan niyamangal durubayogan chayye padunna thaanu prashna. Bhumar, ingane ullan vartagal varinnadu sandosham undu. Few other petitions filed by journalists challenging the sedition law are pending before a different bench. Now, all these petitions will be heard by the Chief Justice bench soon. Chief Justice's strong observations is a message to the government that this law is not needed anymore. In New Delhi, Arunachalam Vaidyanathan, NDTV. Shifting focus to COVID, now India's COVID caseload has risen. India has reported 41,806 new cases in the last 24 hours, up 7.7%. Deaths reported in the last 24 hours, 581, which are down 6.8%. 39,130 patients recovered in the span of one day. That's also down 4.5%. Daily positivity rate is at 2.15% now, less than 3% for 24 consecutive days now. Meanwhile, a worrying sign for India's battle against COVID. Active cases went up by 2,095 on Thursday. While it may not seem like much, this is the highest rise in over two months. In fact, since mid-May, active cases have risen only twice. Of course, this is only one day and the seven-day average continues to dip. But any more frequent rises in the days ahead could change all that. Mamta Banerjee has written to the Prime Minister again asking for vaccine supplies. She said that she needs two crore vaccines a month to ensure that jabs are given to all adults by December. Meanwhile, another flashpoint between centre and states. The centre has said that private hospitals are very slow in buying vaccines and administering them. Private hospitals say that the system of purchase has changed three times in June. Mamta Banerjee has joined that battle as well. Among top hospitals in Kolkata, this was giving 4,000 jabs a day, but has stopped since 3rd July. This one turned away first vaccine seekers and only gave the second dose till supplies arrived late last night. Others are carrying on till stocks last, maybe a week or two days. The Union Health Secretary Rajesh Bhushan told state counterparts on the 14th of July he was seriously worried by the slow pace of vaccine procurement and administration by private hospitals. But hospitals are blaming the frequent change in the system of buying vaccines three times in June, from direct purchase to via PMJAY and latest via COVIN. Response, they say, is slow. 
private hospitals. We have already uh, applied through this your COIN app. But the problem is this, there is a no response so far. Last seven days, 10 days, whatever the days uh, we have applied, but we are not getting any response. And we are not very sure je, whether we'll get these uh, doses. There is also the issue of refund of money paid for vaccines via PMJAY. Hospitals don't want to be named, but one is waiting for a refund of 1 crore rupees, another for 1.7 crore. Both big chains with deep pockets but reeling from the delay. Mamta Banerjee says it is the centre that is to blame. Central government is procured the vaccine and it is their duty to supply the vaccine to all, including the private hospitals also. Even the equipments also, even requirements, all they centralised. So how the private hospital can uh, deliver the goods if they don't get it? Uncertain supply of vaccines, delays in getting refunds for vaccines paid for, these are certainly slowing down the vaccination drive at some hospitals in Kolkata, private hospitals. It is also raising that fundamental question. Do we have enough vaccines to go around to ensure vaccination for all adults by December? With Jiti Shankar, Monadipa Banerjee, NDTV. Now, with the Uttarakhand government cancelling Kamar Yatra this year due to COVID, but UP government allowing it, the favoured destination for the Kamariyas could be Garmukteshwar, about 90 kilometres from Delhi. Akshay Dongre reports. This year, will these pilgrims on foot or the Kamariyas change their destination from Haridwar to Garmukteshwar in Uttar Pradesh, about 90 kilometers from Delhi. During this annual pilgrimage, devotees walk barefoot from their homes to holy spots along the Ganga to collect holy water and take it back home to worship Lord Shiva. While the UP government has said it is not cancelling the Yatra, Uttarakhand has stuck to its decision of not letting the devotees enter Haridwar. This was Kavad Mille ko sthagit karne ka nirne liya gaya hai. Or hume Rajya Zarkar ke is nirne ko lagu karana hai. Iske baujud bhi agar log aate hai, to hum bhoat kathor kadam uthayenge. Hume Rajya, apne Rajya Polis hum PSC ke alawa, RAF ki maang ki hai. With Uttar Pradesh allowing the pilgrimage, lakhs of devotees from UP, Delhi and Haryana are now expected to visit Gadmukteshwar instead. This despite the PM's warning yesterday about crowding. Bina protocol ka amal kiye bina bhaari bheed ka umadna maa samatta hoon ek chinta ka vishay hai, ek thik nahi hai. As well as top course notice to UP and the center on holding the yatra amidst the pandemic. But is Gadmukteshwar an acceptable option to the devotees and are they worried about the exposure to COVID during the pilgrimage? कि उत्तराखंड सरकार ने किया होगा पाबंदी लगाई होंगी स्थगित किए होंगे लेकिन उनका भी मानना कहीं ना कहीं सही रहा होगा हमारा हरिद्वार जाना होता उत्तराखंड के लिए वहां के सरकार ने स्थगित किया है तो हमारा अगला कदम अपना उत्तर प्रदेश से बृजघाट की तरफ होगा मीनवाइल द चीफ मिनिस्टर ऑफ दिल्ली व्हिच कुड सी थाउजेंड्स ऑफ पिलग्रिम्स पास थ्रू इज येट टू से वेदर दिल्ली विल बैन और अलाउ द एनुअल यात्रा Amid the possibility of a third wave of COVID-19, the Union Health Ministry has reiterated that any large gathering of people can lead to a rise in the number of COVID cases across the country. And while the Uttarakhand government has cancelled the annual pilgrimage, the question remains that whether the UP government will also rethink its decision to allow Kavad Yatra this year. With camera person Sushil Rathi, I'm Akshay Dungre, Find TV. Prime Minister Modi visited his parliamentary constituency of Varanasi on Thursday and inaugurated multi-crore worth of projects. He also praised UP Chief Minister's handling of COVID, saying that it was unparalleled. The 
formal beginning of the BJP's big UP poll journey, six months ahead of the prestigious state elections. Sabhi Logan ke pranam. The PM was on his first visit to his Lok Sabha constituency Varanasi in over eight months, first time after the deadly COVID pandemic killed thousands in UP. In his constituency alone, the queues at cremation sites and hospitals spoke volumes of the human suffering. The PM had to dispatch trusted aide A.K. Sharma to manage affairs. The rest of UP saw horrifying scenes of floating corpses in rivers, medicine and oxygen shortage. Three months later, the Prime Minister could now be seen putting all of that behind and praised the Chief Minister for what he feels was exemplary handling of the situation. Reactions came in to the Prime Minister's praise of the CM's handling. जैसे लगता है कि प्रशासन न शासन किसी का अंकुशी नहीं है न डॉक्टरों पर न अस्पतालों में न किसी न मरीज का कोई सहयोग नहीं हो रहा था उसी कार्यकाल में मेरी वाइफ भी कोविड में एक्सपायर भी हो गई मैं चिल्लाता रहा डॉक्टर से बोलता था लेकिन कोई कहीं से नहीं सहयोग मिला सच्चाई यह है कि कोविड में बिल्कुल भी कोई सुविधा नहीं मिली जो लोगों को कोविड होता था वो लोग डर के मारे अपना छिप जाते थे न कोई टेस्ट न कोई दवा न कोई डॉक्टर Modi unveiled a series of development projects in his constituency, the Rudraksh Convention Center, upgradation of the BHU hospital, even the Roro ferry service. Taking a queue, BJP party leaders hit election mode. Office bearers of the BJP met today at the party office in Lucknow on poll strategy. The working committee of the BJP's UP wing will now meet on Friday. National President JP Nadda will be addressing the gathering virtually with the Chief Minister delivering the closing address. The opposition, which so far has been largely dormant regarding elections, insists this won't alter people's minds. Ganga Maya ke kya hal hai? Ganga ka kinara kaisa hai? Ganga के तटों पर किस तरीके से कोरोना काल में लाशें दफनाई गईं, फिर उनका कफन नोचा गया, उस पर भी प्रधानमंत्री जी बात करेंगे। UP goes to polls early next year, and a conscious attempt is being made by the BJP to change the narrative. A series of developmental projects will be inaugurated and unveiled in the next hundred days. But the plan also includes bringing in the discourse around a population control bill. बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट एनडीटीवी आपको हमारे प्रणाम Welcome back. The NHRC report on post-poll violence submitted to Calcutta High Court last week has been leaked. Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee has said to malign the people of Bengal and as vendetta for the BJP's defeat in the assembly polls. The 50-page report seeks a CBI probe into the post-poll violence and slams police for inaction. It says there is no rule of law, only law of rulers in Bengal. The NHRC has refuted the charge of leaking its report. In a press statement, it said that the NHRC report was shared with advocates as per the court order. How they leaked all the news, what they have submitted in the court, if it is not political vendetta? Mamta Banerjee outraged that the NHRC report given to Calcutta High Court in a sealed cover was leaked. Leaked to malign Bengal, she said, and asked, what about Uttar Pradesh? Give a bad name for Bengal, though it is not at all true, only to malign, malign the people of Bengal, because they have lost the election. That's why this is their political vendetta. This is about rule, rule of law. UP, it is out of law, out of rule. Since 24th June, seven teams set up by NHRC visited over 300 places in Bengal to probe complaints of post-poll violence. They even held a camp in Kolkata for people who could not file complaints locally. 
Around 3,000 complaints were probed and a CBI investigation has been recommended. BJP says it has no idea about the leak. This report is that the the law of the landing is the law of the ruler. এখানে যারা শাসন করছেন যারা সরকার পরিচালনা করছেন তাদের আইনি এখানে বলবত The case will be heard on 22nd July when the Bengal government will state its case Mamta Banerjee has said all post poll violence took place when the EC was in charge and not after she took office With Jiti Shankar Monideepa Banerjee NDTV well, that's a wrap on this bulletin from the entire team. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.